Good morning and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about uh, the machine work involved in cutting a factory Honda TRX or ATC 250 or a CR 250 head um, to match a big bore kit. In this particular case this is an ATC 250 head. It's virtually identical to the TRX 250R head. This is the largest overbore piston for a TRX or an ATC 250R. It is two millimeters larger than the stock bore. Uh, the engine that this piston came out of is here for a rebuild and since it's on its maximum bore the cylinder needs to be re-sleeved. In the case of a re-sleeve, the price of the sleeve and the labor to put the sleeve in is virtually identical whether we go back to a 250 or we go to a 310 kit. So like most motors that we do here at ILR Performance, the customer has chosen to go with this 310 big bore. All of our big bore kits utilize uh, a full dome all the way to the outside edge. We don't use a, a stepped piston. This particular head has already been machined quite a bit. It's been machined at least 60 thousandths in the past. There's typically a step right here at the edge that's completely mach been machined out of there. Um, and that step is roughly 60 thousandths. It is cast, so it's not exact. Um, so we know this head's been cut quite a bit already, um, but the distance from here to here is the factory bore size. We need to open up the distance from here to here to match the bore diameter of the new 310 big bore kit and we want to make sure that the angle of this quench area matches the angle of the new piston that we're putting in here so we're going to fixture the head into our holding plate and then we're going to put the holding plate into the lathe first thing we're going to do is go in here and cut the squish angle to the proper angle um, in this particular case, it happens to be 12 degrees, and we're going to extend that out to the diameter that we need for the big bore kit, which in this case, it's a 72 millimeter big bore kit. Um, we cut the heads out one millimeter or larger than that to 73 millimeters, and we do that so that the customer can bore it two more times without having to worry about the head. And then the last operation we're going to do is we're going to have to go in and we're going to have to cut this bowl out to get the volume of the head appropriate for the compression ratio that we want in the ATV. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is set our angle so we can cut our squish. Um, what I have here is a 10 degree and a 2 degree gauge block. So we're just going to use the gauge blocks to set our 12 degree angle up against the head of the lathe or the chuck of the lathe. So that's where we want to be. We'll go ahead and lock down the angle. Pull the blocks back out. We'll lock the other side. Okay, we'll get our uh, tool post mounted back on the lathe. Uh, this one's not terribly critical at this point in time for angle. And we'll go ahead and put our part in the chalk.
We bolt the head onto the cylinder and you can see what we've done is we've scribed a line on the inside of the cylinder. So when the head's bolted on the cylinder, it aligns on the studs. We've scribed a line all the way around it so we know where the edge of the cylinder bore is gonna be. So what I've done was I have gone and double checked to make sure that that scribed line is concentric to our tool bit. Um, it is, um, made some minor adjustments here. So now we're on center to the scribe line. You'll notice when the head spins, the outer casting is not perfectly concentric to the inner scribe line, and you'll see it wobble a little bit, but we are dialing in on the surface that's important to the cylinder. So um, let's go ahead and cut our squish out to our diameter. Here's what our head looks like now that we have uh, surfaced off the gasket surface and we've recut our uh, squish. It's now 73 millimeters from here to here. The current bore on the cylinder is 72 millimeters. So like I said earlier, that gives the customer a 72.5 and a 73 millimeter overbore before they get into uh, any interference with the head. So the next thing we're going to do is change out the tool and we're going to cut out the bolt. I have a couple of special cutters that I've ground over the last few years. This is what's referred to as a forming tool because the final shape is already ground into the tool. Um, I am going to take this over to the grinder and knock off that aluminum from the last head, give this thing a resharpen. So this is set in the tool holder at a specific angle. I'm going to go ahead and plunge that into the cylinder and then come back out with it. I really can't get the camera in there to show you that part of it, but I'll show you what it looks like as soon as I'm done with that cut. This is what our head looks like after we've done the bowl head with the forming tool. Um, I don't know why you can see it in this light, but it is a forming tool that cuts that entire radius. Um, so it does have a tendency to uh, sometimes grab a little piece and leave a burr um, and there's some very very fine vibration marks. So we're going to go ahead and uh, hit those quickly with some sandpaper and then we're going to knock off this sharp edge. We're going to radius this edge a bit as well. And then the next thing we're going to do is take it back over onto the bench and we're going to CC the head and make sure we have the right volume that we need. Here is our cylinder head back on the bench. Um, I leave it on the holding fixture while I do this. That way, if I need to take a little bit more material out anywhere, it's already mounted to the plate. It's already been indexed properly, so all I have to do is pop it back in the chuck, do a quick check, and I can cut as much or on, cut on any of the surfaces that I need to. So let's go ahead and get the burette set up and let's do a flat plate CC on this. Before we can add fluid to this to CC it out with flat plate, we need to obviously plug the spark plug hole. Otherwise all the oil is going to run out. So I've made this uh, small Allen plug. Put threads into the spark plug hole. I put a small amount of sealant on the threads to make sure, obviously, that nothing's going to leak out. And we'll wipe out that sealant so it doesn't affect our measurement. We need to put a small amount of grease around the head to make sure that the plate seals and doesn't leak. <laughs> Now we're going to take our plate, our plexiglass plate. We're going to set it on here so that we can CC this and be able to get it, the oil in through the burette.
Now, if we go back and check our burette, you can see that we are almost exactly right on our 30cc target. We might be uh, to a tenth over, or a tenth under actually, um, but we're right where we want to be at 30cc's for this particular motor to get us at the compression ratio we want to be. Well, that wraps up the machine work needed for the head to go on the 310. And you can see the cylinder to the right side of it that's uh, sleeved and ready to go and the piston that's going to go in it. Um, cylinder and head are going to go out for a Cerakote treatment tomorrow. Uh, when they come back from Cerakote, then they're going to go on the bottom end and then they'll go on the dyno and we'll uh, make sure it runs good and we'll see what kind of power it makes. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you like the content of this channel, please subscribe and like the content. Um, you know, it helps make more videos, helps me dedicate the time to take uh, the videos and do the editing, take the time to do it. So uh, greatly appreciate it if you'd subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye.